Today we move on to the last or maybe second last topic that we will discuss in this course. As we said in the last module we want to discuss two dimensional IR spectroscopy and then uh, we want to discuss a little bit of surface sum uh, frequency, surface nonlinear spectroscopy. Now uh, looking at the number of lectures already delivered and the number of hours prescribed for an NPTEL course, I am not very sure whether we will have time to go into this uh, surface nonlinear spectroscopy bit, but let us see how far we get. So today what we essentially want to do is we want to uh, start learning what happens when we add one more dimension to the pump probe spectroscopic technique that we have studied. And uh, our discussion will be limited to uh, the infrared region, but then uh, after this if you read papers on say 2D electronic spectroscopy the principles are pretty much the same. So uh, I hope that nobody will have any difficulty understanding 2D electronic spectroscopy as well after this course. But we will limit our discussions to 2D IR spectroscopy and today we will get introduced uh, in this module we are going to get introduced to this topic. Before proceeding further let me acknowledge uh, the contribution of my friend Dr. Shukhendu Nath from Bhava Atomic Research Center. Shukhendu has set up a uh, two dimensional IR spectroscopy uh, spectrometer in BRC and he is a real expert. Uh, I have learned 2D IR spectroscopy from him and some of the material in the slides that I am going to show you are actually from a presentation that he had made in uh, our department. The other 2 dr uh, spectrometer that is there is in Iser Pune uh, by uh, in the lab of uh, Professor Bagchi. So uh, here goes what is the meaning of 2 dr spectroscopy. Before that let me remind you of something that we had studied about 10-12 modules ago. We had talked about vibrational spectrum of liquid water and we had said that when we talk about liquid water uh, the molecules are all associated to each other by hydrogen bond. So uh, first of all this liberational mode comes up which is not there for isolated water molecule and we saw that these modes are all coupled meaning if you can excite one mode then the vibration energy gets redistributed in an ultra fast time scale into other modes as well. I hope uh, we have uh, we all remember this uh, discussion that we had made. So 2D IR is sort of the next step of what we have studied in uh, the course of discussion of this topic. There if you remember we did an IR pump IR probe we learned an IR pump IR probe uh, spectroscopic technique. Here uh, what is the how do we add another dimension and what is the advantage? The advantage is we get an idea of coupled vibrations. Uh, in the uh, example discussed earlier we had to look at the time constants and then from there we had to uh, get an idea of uh, what kind of coupling is there. Here we see we get another uh, very uh, useful and interesting feature in the spectrum that comes up if you add one more dimension. But let us take it slow let us go step by step. Let us say I have an IR spectrum where there are two peaks w a omega a and omega b. Now there are two possibilities one is that omega a and omega b arise from two different isolated normal modes of vibration of the molecule. I am talking about non associated isolated molecule now right uh, as we know molecules have these normal modes of vibration and each normal mode can be modeled as harmonic or anharmonic oscillator. Now let us say we have oscillators that are not coupled with each other then we expect to get uh, two bands like this due to two transitions like this. But from this spectrum can we say that the picture is what we have drawn already and not this one. How do we know that the vibrations are not coupled? In a coupled system uh, when you excite one vibration energy can be transferred to the other. So actually two quantum numbers are required one for each oscillator this is something we will elaborate upon later. So looking at this spectrum there is no way in which we can say whether we have a case of isolated oscillators or coupled oscillators. If you read this paper in uh, the published in 2001 
we will see that they had studied uh, IR spectra of uh, trialanine and they had done isotopic substitution. So, the uh, IR spectrum of trialanine turns out to be something like this and here uh, they focused on a particular region of the spectrum 1550 to 750 centimeter inverse. This is where the so called amide 1 stretch uh, amide 1 vibration uh, shows up. Now, there are several amide bonds here. It is possible that the amide bonds vibrate by themselves or maybe they are coupled. How do you know from the spectrum can you tell what is happening here? You cannot. But if you do 2D IR spectroscopy and here I am jumping the gun a little bit and showing you a 2D IR spectrum already. What you see is that this 2D IR spectrum is actually a 3 dimensional plot. On one axis we have pump frequency, on the other axis we have probe frequency. There is a third axis pointing out of the projection towards you or towards me. That axis gives you the intensity or absorbance whatever you choose to plot. So, uh, whenever we have a 3 dimensional plot and we have to draw it on a 2 dimensional paper or 2 dimensional surface, it is most convenient to show it as contour diagrams. These contour lines essentially join all points where absorbance or intensity is the same. And uh, what these contour lines look like, uh, they represent is that they represent hills. So, this contour line outside is has the lowest magnitude, the point inside has the highest magnitude. As you go from out to in, you see you can get a hill or you can get a trough if the sign of the uh, absorbance is negative. Uh, in this course, at this stage, uh, we are familiar with uh, negative absorbance. What we are really talking about is delta A, as we know, for ground state bleach and for uh, stimulated emission, you actually get negative delta A signals. So, depending on that, usually it is color coded to show whether it is plus or minus, and then you get contour lines like this to represent the three dimensional surfaces. Three dimensions, remember, are uh, pump frequency, first dimension, probe frequency, and delta A or delta T or whatever you choose to plot is a third dimension. So, this is conventionally called a 2D spectrum. Those of us who have studied NMR spectroscopy might be familiar with 2D NMR spectroscopy. In fact, that came first. The idea of 2D IR and 2D electronic spectroscopy uh, borrows heavily from the understanding developed already from 2D NMR spectroscopy. Okay. So, uh, if you study 2D NMR, you would know that by 2D NMR, one can actually understand what kind of coupling is there between different nuclei and from there one can predict structure function and so on and so forth. That is why 2D NMR is very useful in elucidation of structure of complex molecules like proteins. So, in IR spectroscopy uh, what one can do and what has been done in this paper that we are citing is that uh, actually coupling between different normal modes have been worked out and from there it has been shown that one can talk about structure and not only structure the advantage is that since uh, this vibrational coherences all decay in ultra fast time scale, one can talk about ultra fast dynamics of evolution of structure by looking at how this coupling changes as a function of time. That is the appeal of 2D IR spectroscopy to the ultra fast community. Okay. Now, let us go back to basics once again and uh, start from something that we have uh, discussed many times in this course and that is pump probe spectroscopy. Here remember we are using ultra fast pulses. So, spectrally uh, there is a lot of width. Bandwidth is significant for ultra fast pulses as we know. So, we are talking about broadband pump probe spectroscopy and uh, for the purpose of the present discussion we are talking about broadband pump probe spectroscopy in the IR range. Let us say these are the energy levels of a particular normal mode in a polyatomic molecule. For our purpose, we will only talk about V equal to 0, V equal to 1, V equal to 2. Uh, one can talk about V equal to 3, 4, 5, but uh, at least to start this is enough. So, as we know uh, in ground state at room temperature only V equal to 0 is populated for all practical purposes. So, suppose I pump this, we call this process 1 and corresponding band that we are going to show will be called band 1. 
I have pumped V0 to V, v equal to 0 to V equal to 1. If we do a pump probe experiment and if 1 is a pump then what I can do is I can probe different regions. So, this is the broadband pump that I am using and uh, the probe that I can do is first of all I can probe the same region. What is it that we will get if we probe 2? 2 uh, is essentially the same spectral region as 1. So, what we can get is that we, can, we get contribution from ground state bleach of v equal to 0 and we can also get stimulated emission from v equal to 1 and they add up to give you a negative signal as we know. So, we expect a negative signal like this. What happens if we probe uh, v equal to zero, 1 to v equal to 2 region let us call that region region 3 there uh, we expect a positive signal is not it because that is going to be a transient absorption. Now, if we vary the delay between pump and probe then we expect that this signal is going to decrease it is going to become smaller and smaller at sufficiently long time it is going to become 0. This is something that we know already. But now the additional dimension that comes is that since it is a broadband pump let us say we have the capability of exciting using narrower band light spanning the range of the broadband absorption of 0 to 1. Then what happens? Then I can record these transient spectra for each of these pump wavelengths and I can plot for a any given delay let us say I can plot a 3D plot like what we have discussed already pump frequency on one axis, probe frequency on the other, intensity or absorbance on the other third axis represented by contours. So, what do we expect? What happens when we pump at 1? Pump at 1 let us say the frequency is nu 0 1. We expect a negative signal for probe frequency of nu 0 1 as discussed already. We expect a positive signal for probe frequency of nu 1 2 when nu 0 1 corresponds to the frequency matching the uh, energy gap between v, v equal to 0 and v equal to 1 nu 1 2 is the frequency corresponding to the energy gap between v equal to 1 to v equal to 2. Of course, if this is a harmonic oscillator then uh, nu 0 1 will be equal to nu 1 2, but for anharmonic oscillators they are going to be different. Okay. So, what do I see? Do I see a point here and a point here? Not really because the thing is this uh, think of the uh, pump axis. So, when I scan from say lower frequency to higher frequency of pump whatever signal I get here it is going to go up from this side to that right pump frequency lower to higher lower to higher absorbance is increasing and then going through a maximum. So, whatever is the intensity that I get at nu 0 equal to 1 magnitude of it remember we get a negative signal at nu 0 1 magnitude of it is going to go up and go down along this axis not very difficult to understand. And then if you look at the probe axis this is the probe axis here also for any given pump the magnitude of signal goes up negative sense here and then goes down until it becomes 0 and I am saying go up and go down I am only talking about magnitude. So, what do you expect? You get uh, a distorted uh, uh, well you get a 3 dimensional not really Gaussian not necessarily Gaussian distorted Gaussian kind of shape. So, at center wavelength of nu 0 1 we expect this kind of a shape. The negative signal due to here blue means negative red means positive negative signal due to uh, ground state bleach of 1 and transient uh, well uh, stimulated emission denoted by 2. Okay. So, we get a 3 dimensional surface and at nu 1 2 at the intersection of nu 0 1 pump and nu 1 2 probe we get a similar signal, but positive. Okay. What is the difference between the maximum point in the positive signal and the negative signal not very difficult to see from here to here the difference in frequencies.
ok. So, that would give you the difference in frequencies of nu 1 2 and nu uh, 0 1 uh, modal frequencies ok. That is not very difficult to understand ok, but that has already introduced us to uh, 2DIR. This is the simplest possible 2DIR spectrum that one could think of. Now let us make the situation a little more complex because as we said earlier the uh, appeal of 2DIR lies in uh, the understanding of coupling between normal modes of vibration. So if coupling has to happen then you should have two normal modes. So now let us see what kind of 2DIR spectrum we expect when we have not one but two normal modes of vibration. To start with let us talk about two isolated modes, two isolated modes uh, denoted by these two potential energy surfaces since they are quantum oscillators the energy is quantized and here we have shown v equal to 0, v equal to 1, v equal to 2 and just to uh, ensure that we uh, do not forget that this mode is different from the other one we have represented the uh, vibrational quantum numbers in the second mode as 0 dash 1 dash 2 dash. So, the way I have drawn it here it might look like uh, the modes are uh, uh, similar they do not have to be the shapes can be different the uh, energy minima have to be different this is uh, not is a not to scale diagram. But now if we zoom in forget about the parabolas for the moment look at only the vibrational energies and zoom into the first one we already know what kind of transitions we can expect for the first normal mode and it is not very difficult to figure that we expect very similar kind of transitions for the second normal mode as well. Here instead of 1 we have written 4 for the 0 1 pump the uh, and instead of 2 we have written 5 for this v dash equal to 1 dash to v dash equal to 0 dash transition and we have written 6 instead of 3 for v dash equal to 1 to v dash equal to 2 dash transition ok. So, what kind of IR 2D IR spectrum do we expect when the modes are isolated there is no coupling whatsoever they do not talk to each other ok. This is uh, what we are going to get. Right now we have not shown any peak here, but for the sake of understanding I have shown these spectra where the mode 1 and mode 2 are ok. Now when we pump mode 1 ok which means uh, we pump here then what do we expect to get? We expect to get a uh, negative signal for 2 which will occur in uh, this region and we expect to get a positive one for 3 which will occur also in this region. This will be at lower frequency because for an anharmonic oscillator nu equal to 1 to nu equal to 2 gap is smaller than nu equal to 0 to nu 1 to nu equal to 1 energy gap. So, we expect this kind of a feature that we have discussed already negative signal due to ground state bleach of 1 uh, stimulated emission of 2 positive signal for transient absorption uh, pathway 3 fine. But now say we have the capability of scanning the pump wavelength. So, we do not have to pump necessarily at uh, mode 1 we can pump mode 2 also which means we can pump here. What do we expect to see? We expect to see an exactly similar feature not here but here in the region of uh, mode 2 frequency. Again we expect to see a negative signal and a positive signal not very difficult to understand ok. So, uh, in a no coupling case we can expect to see modes along the diagonal this diagonal here represents uh, the pump frequency equal to probe frequency situation. So, we expect uh, as many uh, positive and negative pairs as the number of degenerate sorry as the number of non degenerate vibrational normal modes. We expect along the diagonal as many uh, positive and negative pairs as the number of non degenerate vibrational normal modes in the molecule ok. 
this is what we expect when coupling is not there. Now let us say coupling is there which means if I pump one normal mode then it can transfer the energy to the second normal mode as well and cause transition uh, of the second normal mode from v dash equal to 0 to v dash equal to 1 state. To discuss such a situation first of all uh, this is one way in which we can show coupling okay, uh, by a uh, dual energy minimum kind double well kind of potential with a potential barrier. Now what I have drawn here is symmetric double well but the most general case would be an asymmetric double well this would be lower or higher the way I have drawn it here it should be lower. Now what happens since the system is coupled you cannot uh, really talk about the 0, 1, 2 vibrational quantum numbers and 0 dash, 1 dash, 2 dash vibrational quantum numbers separately. To, de to designate any particular energy state we need to specify both the quantum numbers as is shown here. So the lowest energy quantum number will be 0, 0 dashed which means this is how it is populated. This normal mode is in the 0th state, this normal mode is in the 0 dashed state. And then what one can do is uh, using light of suitable frequency one can do a promotion to 1 0 dash state. 1 0 dash state would mean that this uh, normal mode has undergone a promotion this has not. Okay. So 1 0 dash means the second normal mode uh, continues to be in the 0 dash uh, state but the first one goes to a higher energy 1 state or you could have the other way around 0 1 dash. 0 1 dash simply means uh, no transition in the first normal mode 0 dash to 1 dash transition in the second normal mode. Okay. So these states are uh, basically the same as the isolated ones we have just uh, had to redesignate re them so that we show both the quantum numbers together. Similarly one can understand what the meaning of 2 0 dash and 0 2 dash is. But that is not all as a result of coupling one needs to think of some other states as well. One state that arises is 1 1 dash state where the where both the normal modes have been excited to 1 dash. It is not necessary that only one normal mode is excited right. One can have both the normal modes in the excited state that is 1 1 dash normal mode. It is important to understand that the 1 1 dash normal mode can be produced in two ways. You cannot go from uh, 0 0 dash state to 1 1 dash state directly and once again uh, for those who have studied NMR spectroscopy I would like you to think what happens when you talk about two nuclei. Suppose you have alpha alpha you cannot go from alpha alpha to beta beta uh, by itself because that would require uh, in a single transition you cannot go from alpha alpha to beta beta right because one photon can only bring about one transition. That is called one photon rule I think we have talked about this earlier in this course as well. So in one photon transition uh, you cannot go from 0 0 dash to 1 1 dash. So uh, only one normal mode can undergo uh, excitation when one photon impinges on the molecule. So you cannot go from 0 0 dash to 1 1 dash but one can go from 1 0 dash to 1 1 dash right because 1 0 dash to 1 1 dash essentially means the first oscillator is kept well sorry the second oscillator is kept what am I saying uh, 1 0 dash to 1 1 dash means already the first oscillator is in the v equal to 1 state. Now one photon comes and all it has to do is to promote the second oscillator from 0 dash to 1 dash state. 1 0 dash to 1 1 dash essentially means promotion of the second oscillator from 0 dash to 1 dash state 1 dash level when the first oscillator is already at v equal to 1. Okay. So we will call this pathway pathway 7 and uh, it is important to understand that the energy of this is equal to the 0 dash to 1 dash transition. 
what else can we do? We can do the other thing from 0 1 dashed we can go to 1 1 dashed also. If you want to go from 0 1 dashed to 1 1 dashed then what we are doing essentially is that already the second oscillator is in the 1 dashed level. Now the first oscillator is in 0 level 1 photon comes and promotes it from 1 0 dashed to uh, 1 1 dashed state. We call that pathway 8. Now let us think how this 2 d IR spectrum is going to change if at all if we uh, if we pump either mode 1 or mode 2. Let us say we pump mode 1. In addition to pathway 2 and pathway 3 the other pathway that is available is this right because the what the pump has done is that the pump has populated the 1 0 dash state. Now the probe if the frequency is right can bring about a 1 0 dash to 1 1 dash transition that is a transient absorption. So we expect a positive going signal and where do we expect the positive going signal remember we have pumped mode 1. So this is the pump frequency and the positive going signal as we said earlier should appear in the same frequency as uh, this 0 dash to 1 dash transition because that is the transition that is taking place here. So we should get something that comes here where pump frequency is that of the uh, of mode 1 but the probe frequency is the same as that of 6. The other thing that happens is that the moment you have this uh, 1 0 dash to 1 1 dash transition the other thing that happens is that uh, the second oscillator well not other thing the same thing the second os oscillator uh, gets promoted from 0 dash to 1 dash level yeah 1 0 dash to 1 1 dash as we said essentially is 0 dash to 1 dash promotion when the first oscillator is in v equal to 1 level. So 0 dash to 1 dash promotion it is manifested in two things one is transient absorption that is 7 second thing is again ground state bleach. So here we get another positive negative uh, signal but this time it is off diagonal okay. We have pumped mode 1 and we have got in the probe a signature that we expect when we pump mode 2. Similarly, if we now uh, well uh, and this is delta 1 2 as we have discussed earlier. Now if we pump mode 4 what will happen again uh, the same thing will happen we will get another cross diagonal peak in this position because pumping mode 4 is going to bring about a transient absorption here in pathway 8 which is 0 1 dash to 0 1 1 dash 1 dash remains 1 dash the first oscillator goes from 0 to 1. So pump wavelength will be for mode 2 probe wavelength we get the feature where we got it for pumping at mode 1. So the uh, significant new feature that we get if we perform two dimensional IR spectroscopy is of diagonal peaks and as we have seen in the uh, discussion so far of diagonal peaks do not arise if uh, coupling is not there. If we have off, off diagonal peaks that means the two modes have coupled very similar to 2D and MR spectroscopy and that gives us an idea uh, about if we extrapolate further uh, and interpret a little more that can give us an idea of the structure. Okay. So take home message is that off diagonal peak in 2D IR spectrum is a signature of coupling great. Now uh, after all this is an ultra fast dynamics course so it is logical to ask can we follow some kind of a dynamics using this of course we can we are doing pump probe remember. So what we can do is in addition to scanning the uh, pump frequency we can also uh, vary the delay time between pump and probe like what we have discussed so many times earlier. 
Let us take this example where uh, we have this situation let us say we have this molecule uh, this C double bond O let us say or well some molecule that can do hydrogen bonding. Let us say initially there is no hydrogen bonding nu 1 is the wavelength of this vibration nu 2 is the wavelength of this vibration. So, if there is no coupling no hydrogen bonding then we expect this kind of a spectrum only diagonal peaks. If hydrogen bonding is there then we expect of diagonal peaks. This is something that we know already from uh, our previous discussion. Now see if the situation is such that the hydrogen bonding is not there in down state. We excite it and then uh, in the excited state the hydrogen bond gets formed. Then what happens? Then with time we go from this non hydrogen bonded non coupled structure to hydrogen bonded coupled structure. So, at time 0 we expect to have a 2 dir spectrum without off diagonal peaks. With progress in time the off diagonal peaks slowly emerge and the dynamics of emergence of the uh, off diagonal peaks gives us the dynamics of formation of hydrogen bond. So, this is an introduction to the 2 dir spectroscopy uh, technique well this is an introduction and this tells us what we can do by 2D IR. Uh, next day in well next module we are going to learn uh, what happens or rather how are we supposed to do it. We understand that 2D IR spectroscopy gives us additional information, but we have to uh, do a frequency domain as well as time domain measurement. How do we do it? We will start with this simplest technique frequency frequency double resonance 2D IR and we will learn something about Fabry Perot filter uh, and then we will move on to a little more complicated technique. So, in the next module we are going to discuss techniques of 2D IR spectroscopy.